to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. And we're going to talk past because we've got a lot of news. <laughs> well, in, uh, it, we told you about this legislation all over the states uh, on LGBT rights, mostly bad. South Dakota, the legislature at least, has passed a law against transgender students using bathrooms and locker rooms and things like that that are consistent with their gender identity. First in the nation. What a distinction. More to come. Yes, uh, unless, of course, the governor vetoes it. Uh, and I'm sure you'll want to hear all about Justice Antonin Scalia, found dead after his 30-year battle with social progress. That's actually a headline from The Onion. Uh, the White House has its first transgender liaison, and the president's right-hand man turns out to be gay. And it turns out it's a brilliant lesbian scientist who was a major contributor to our proving Einstein's theory about the, what, wrinkle in space and time? And yeah. as if Don't I ask know me what to I'm explain it. About, no. Uh, we are very sad to have heard of the uh, passing of a gay cable network veteran. Uh, we used to work with him, Michael Wyand. Flatiron Mike Wyand. He's dead at 63. Great activist and uh, and involved with this show. I'm we'll going to bring you a little videotape. Yes, yeah. a little uh, out of the history bank. Uh, we will also talk about the escalating crackdown on LGBT people in Indonesia. Bermuda blocked uh, a bill on same-sex marriage, and uh, Italy is stalling on civil unions. What happened to our progress? Andy will review Ed Harris in Sam Shepard's Buried Child. And Ann will tell you all about the Grammys. Because he doesn't know anything about I it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but first, we, we got to go with the headline in the urgent news, which is what just happened in South Dakota this week, where the legislature passed this heinous bill that says that transgender students absolutely cannot have access to uh, bathrooms, locker rooms, whatever, that would fit their current gender identity. It's, this is ludicrous. Yeah. I mean, the basic theme that we're seeing play out in all of these uh, legislative battles is uh, what the right wing is saying is, no men in women's bathrooms. That's their theme, and it's working. Oh, we agree no men in women's bathrooms, but our version is no trans men in women's bathrooms because you think they're s women. Uh, they're not. They're men, and no. they should be in the men's room. What South Dakota has done uh, definitely runs afoul of uh, Title IX, and they could lose federal Title IX funding if they go through with this. And that's why, as of we're sitting here, people are, are saying, you know, call the governor and tell him to veto this thing. Uh, what was also interesting to me about this was that they held hearings in the legislature on this, and hundreds of people showed up from all across the state, uh, trans students, parents of trans kids, uh, activists from all over, uh, LGBT people across the board, and the only people who testified in favor of this bill were the right-wing legal lobbyists, the Alliance Defending Freedom. They uh, run things well, in but a they, lot of these states. They didn't even make a pretense of having one offended parent show up to say, I don't want my you know, daughter to have to deal with a man in the bathroom. And there was a transgender student who said, you know, all right, I'm going to leave the state. I'm going to have to leave the state if you do stuff like this. Well, good luck, because this is advancing in other states, too. But uh, other legislation is also advancing in South Dakota. There is a bill advancing to not allow uh, trans athletes to participate in sports in their current gender identity. The bathroom bill in Virginia died in committee. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, but they, but in Virginia, well, are we finished with South Dakota? Well, yeah. Uh, South Dakota is leading the way. It is on the cutting edge, and it is this non-bathroom uh, locker room bill, no participation for trans kids in these locker rooms. Yeah. And isn't it interesting that they're targeting the kids? Yes. Uh, this is not about adults, this is about students in schools. 
but they are they're on the cutting edge but they are going to be a model this is a test case for the right wing for the entire well, country here here's what may be a better test case because it's more immediate in south carolina in hari county school district they myrtle beach they suspended a trans student for using a restroom between classes <clears throat> that was consistent with uh, uh, I don't know his. if it was uh, his uh, gender identity. Trans boy went to the ba the m boy's room to go to the bathroom, and he was hauled out and suspended from school. I'm sure he wasn't standing at the urinal. Uh, and uh, Lambda is ready to sue under Title IX and under the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The district is warned. So if we could settle some of these things in court, maybe we can head some of these things off. Well, there, there are some mixed results. In Washington state, the Senate has rejected an anti-trans bathroom bill by one vote. <laughs> yeah, 24 to 25. In West Virginia, the House there has passed a bill that allows discrimination if you have a sincerely held religious belief. Uh, as long as you're sincere. Uh, that passed 72 to 26. Uh, 16 Democrats uh, uh, voted for it with the Republican majority. Uh, the state Senate only has a two-seat Republican majority. In Tennessee, a Senate committee has, uh, has a bill, passed a bill, that says therapists and marriage counselors can refuse gay clients on the basis of their religious beliefs. Now, this is contrary to the ethical rules of all counseling organizations. You uh, are not supposed to refuse clients because you are prejudiced against them. It was a, it was a seven to one vote. The lone vote against it was a Democrat. Now, again, we're nonpartisan here, but we do have to tell you where this is coming from. A, a viewer wrote this week and said, you're very mean to Republicans. <laughs> we love to report on Republicans who support LGBT rights. We yearn for Republican support and for LGBT rights. And we report on Democrats who oppose LGBT Absolutely. rights. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, but, but please give us more news. Exactly. In, uh, in uh, Missouri, uh, they have been debating whether to do a non-discrimination bill statewide uh, that includes sexual orientation and gender identity. And they are now getting opposition to that bill, unlike in other states, from some major corporations that have 100% good yeah. ratings from HRC. And what are these businesses saying? Well, you know, our employees could lie and say they've been oh, fired because they're gay, and yeah. and you know, who would you, know? I think you better look into those 100% <laughs> ratings. Do you agree with this statement, for instance? Yeah. Uh, in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, they're going to vote on an LGBT rights ordinance on February 22nd. And in Jacksonville, Florida, they have abandoned for the moment an attempt to pass a non-discrimination bill. The city council says it's not ready. Uh, they may go ahead. There's still talk of some public referendum on this, but uh, we had hoped the city council would pass this, but they're not going to. But back home in Indiana, uh, somebody asked Governor Pence uh, about uh, protecting LGBT rights, and he says, oh, I don't believe in discrimination against anybody. Look at what's in my heart, but I will not support legislation that diminishes religious freedom. This is the formula now. This is what they say. I, uh, no discrimination against anyone, especially because of your religious freedom. But good news for Michigan, they did remove that sodomy provision from yeah. the animal rights bill. whoop de doo uh, The illegal sodomy provision <laughs> that was outlawed by the Lawrence v. Texas case, uh, what, 15 years ago? Yeah. Not quite, but close. In Virginia and Georgia, yeah. they are advancing really bad religious freedom bills, very, very broad. Including now, by the government, including discrimination by the government against gay people, yeah. uh, LGBT people, I should say. Uh, now, in Virginia, we do have Governor Terry McAuliffe, Democrat, who has promised to veto this bill if it shows up on his desk. But, uh, you know, I don't count on anything until we get there. And we certainly don't have uh, Governor McAuliffe in Georgia to veto it. And some progress in Kentucky. They had a hearing on the LGBT rights discrimination. Oh, well, they're having it today as we sit here on LGBT uh, discrimination protections. And they had a big rally by uh, Fairness, the Fairness Coalition there. And it's only the second hearing ever they've ever had. I mean, it doesn't mean it's going to pass, but they're, may, they're at least getting it heard. OK. Uh, oh, and also in Kentucky, there is a legislative proposal 
about mari making marriage licenses, e either having a marriage license for bride and groom and another one for first party oh, and yeah. second party, but there seems to be a fix in the work where you put all of those on one marriage license application so you can call yourselves whatever you want. Right. That would be nice. Uh, all right, should we get to Scalia or? Well, 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 yeah, we've got some other new, gay news, but let's talk about Antonin Scalia. I'm sure you're all eager to hear what we have to say about him. I mean, the problem is, if you've been watching the news, uh, the, you know, the big news shows, they are not getting into how awful he was. Oh, what a great thinker, what a fine mind, what a great writer, what a so influential on the court. Of course, he was on the losing side of most of the LG, uh, the gay rights cases. Well, that brought, uh, yes, that was uh, heartening. And there were 6-3 decisions, a lot of them, that uh, he was on the losing side of. My favorite moment in the coverage, and I've been watching this yeah, me too. nonstop, wall to wall, <laughs> one, one guest, Linda Greenhouse, legendary, longtime Supreme Court reporter for the New York Times, yes. goes on a show on CNN or MSNBC over the weekend. And, and this is the only time I've seen her appear, which may be because of what she said, oh. which was, well, you know, really, he wasn't all that influential. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't interested in right. forming coalitions or bringing people to his point of view, so uh, he was kind of a lone wolf, and uh, he really didn't have much of an impact on and, anything. And whenever he knew he was going to be on the losing side, he really let loose with extremely offensive things, Horrible. especially about us. Yes. I mean, we should, uh, since you're not hearing them on a lot of the other news shows, oh, yes, they said he was controversial and all those kinds of stuff. But like in the in the Lawrence v. Texas case, when we finally get rid of the so sodomy laws, he has to say, many Americans do not want persons who openly engage in homosexual conduct as partners in their businesses, as scoutmasters for their children, as teachers in their schools, or as boarders in their home. Uh, th these this were the kinds of things that he said. He said it was uh, perfectly uh, understandable and acceptable to have animus against reprehensible homosexual conduct. Well, he said conduct that's reprehensible, including murder or polygamy or cruelty to animals. Uh, you know, we were allowed to have animus against that. Evan Wolfson, uh, formerly of Freedom to Marry, said that he reveled in disparagement and incendiary attacks. Uh, and someone else, uh, Jenny Pizer, I think of Lambda, said that he exhibited uh, endless contempt for LGBT yes. people. And of course, you're hearing mostly about the politics of this and how are we going to get, ever get a, get a replacement for him. Uh, as you know, Republican, most Republicans have said, we're just not going to act on a nomination by President Obama. Of uh, because it's because it's you know he's only he, he's only got a few months to go. Oh please, it's all about their politics and their but they're playing a very very dangerous game. Yeah. Because if they lose this presidential election and lose some Senate seats, both of which are highly uh, possible, I, I won't say probable, <laughs> but possible, they're going to be stuck. They're going to be in worse position. So now the thinking is that they will do the stall, they will, you know, Grassley is saying, okay, we'll, we'll Charles take... Charles Grassley of... Uh, yeah, uh, maybe we'll have... Uh, who is the head of the Judiciary yeah, Committee. Yeah, maybe we'll have uh, hearings or whatever, but they'll stall, stall, stall until November, and then once they see which way the election goes, they will either do a rush, uh, lame duck uh, approval of the president's appointment, uh, between the November election and the new Senate taking their seats, or they will continue to stall it out if well, they win the election. Th let's be honest about this. If, uh, if, I, I, have I ever been less than right. that? If, if this was the last year of George Bush's term and the, and the uh, balance of the court was at stake, we, we would, I, I would never advocate um, uh, stalling. There's no point in stalling. I would. Just vote it down if you don't well, like yes, it. That's, yes, that, that's, yes. See, they could, go, they could go through the motions yes. in a normal amount of time, sure. which these days is several months, and then just vote it down and say, we don't accept this nominee. We didn't accept, uh, the Democrats did not accept Robert Bork. Thank God. Which is how we got Scalia. <laughs> <laughs> because we were so, I mean, we were so, really, Bork was uh, a hey, harsh... Hey, take your pick. Bork was a harsh show his entire <laughs> life, so it was easy to vote against him. But Scalia had been a law professor. No one had looked into the fact that he was a, and I'm going to say this, a racist dog as a law professor, treating uh, black students in the law school with animus, uh, to use a legal term. Uh, that's what's been, uh, you know, said about him. So we got Scalia 
98 to nothing. They just said, well, okay, we were very hard on Bork. Shameful. We'll give you Scalia. Because, because he had good qualifications and he didn't have as much of a paper trail. And then, now they're quoting what he said at one point about, oh, we should diversify the court. We need Westerners. We need non-Harvard, Yale people, blah, blah, blah. You, you know, we're going to let this guy, this racist dog, direct well, the uh, nominations from beyond the grave? David Axelrod, who was uh, um, President Obama's uh, advisor, uh, now in, in, in private practice, uh, he, um, he spoke, Scalia called him after uh, the first opening on the court came for Obama, and he said, can I ask you something? I know you're not going to give me somebody like me and all this kind of stuff. He says, could you send us somebody smart, somebody like Elena Kagan? He said this to her. <laughs> and they didn't appoint Kagan then. They appointed Sotomayor, but they yeah. eventually gave us Kagan. Wow. Interesting. Well, Scalia is also known for opening up the uh, the personalities and, and speech of the court because uh, justices didn't use to speak to the press much or be open about uh, what they were doing. They wrote books after they got off the court or retired or whatever. But man, he was out there talking to everybody and so a lot of the others were too. And, and all this stuff about, oh, you know, this, this universal thing that, you know, people don't get confirmed in the last term uh, of a bull. president that is total bull, including Oliver Ellsworth, who was President Washington's nominee to be the third Chief Justice, a direct and is a direct descendant of Oliver Ellsworth. <laughs> this was yeah. in 1796. The president only had a year to go. Yep, he was uh, appointed and confirmed in the last year. He was. So, uh, but you know, Scalia, he always let his religious uh, views guide oh, him completely. Unbelievable, and and was proud of it. Uh, bragged but about the he, fact he was such. Can I use this word prick? Uh, on this show. Well, I mean, that's what he was. He attacked uh, Sandra Day O'Connor in a Planned Parenthood decision so badly that that moved her to the center and to the left on some issues. He was so nasty to her personally. He was nasty to a lot of them. He wrote uh, uh, tons of dissents that just disparaged the language in the majority opinions. Nope. Although I have to agree that his uh, his criticism of Anthony Kennedy's language in the Obergefell decision was uh, a little on point. Uh, <laughs> well, now some of the, you know, we've, you've, you've read about some of the people being thought of as possible successors. We have a picture of this guy, Sri Srinivasan, a judge who was just confirmed 97 to nothing, but as assistant attorney, uh, so, excuse me, assistant solicitor general, he argued the Windsor case for the Obama administration. He's a f In our favor. And he's a former clerk for Republicans, including Sandra Day O'Connor, and a corporate lawyer who worried labor unions. They're talking about a lot of different people, and the, the uh, speculation is, does uh, Obama go with a moderate who would be so inoffensive to both sides that he would be able to really, you know, shame the Republicans into voting for him or her? Or does he go with someone who's more lefty, who just becomes a great, wonderful uh, goal? It, it, uh, well, it is all about politics now. Since uh, we don't expect either one of them to be it, confirmed. I mean, it has been about politics for a long time. I used to urge Democratic senators, yes, look at what these judges stand for. And if you, if you don't agree with them, don't vote for them. That's well, the advising. I, I, I am discouraged and appalled by the relentless emotional blackmail campaign being put on by the right wing right now to say, you know, how dare you even think of appointing anyone who is a liberal. Uh, the whole point of this whole process over more than 200 years yes. has been for whoever is in power to try to shape the court well, in the value system that they support. Well, Franklin Roosevelt comes in, a uh, bunch of Republican presidents before, before him, and he's very unhappy, and they're overturning a lot of his programs, and he tried to pack the court. And he lost a lot. He lost a lot of respect because he tried to do that. Well, he wanted to ex it, expanding it, yes. adding more members so he could change which, the balance. Which they did not. Well, let that him. was pretty ugly. They, they didn't let him do it. Uh, a couple of things. First of all, if you're wondering, you say, you know, we overturned sodomy, we got marriage. What more could we want? Well, uh, we're going to need some rulings on these religious freedom restoration acts that are passing in all these states. We're going to need rulings on whether. Uh, the laws against sex discrimination include sexual orientation and gender identity. We're going to challenge the constitutionality of all these anti-trans bills. We need a Supreme Court that is progressive and intelligent and uh, will take this stuff on. In the meantime, 
any decision made by what will be the final court, essentially, would be the court of, you know, the, the, the federal appellate courts and what, what those districts say. Would, and if those decisions get 4-4 four, four rulings by the Supreme Court, tied rulings, because there are four liberals and there are four conservatives now, uh, although Kennedy can switch on some issues, uh, those rulings stand. So, for instance, out west, and that includes not just California, but Alaska, uh, the Ninth Circuit, which makes all these liberal rulings, all those rulings are going to stand. For the moment. Yes, for uh, the moment. They can, they can be reconsidered when the court gets a Ninth Justice. Uh, but I, uh, we have plenty to be concerned about, and we need to stand firm in our desire, uh, legally and politically, to have a more progressive justice. Don't fall for this business of, you know, we need someone in the center or we need someone like Scalia. Nonsense. This has always been a battle over these values. Now, I have to say that my favorite moment from Scalia's life came when he was asked to speak at NYU Law School, which shamefully had given him some honor or award or something. So he goes there to speak. And he's written all this horrible stuff about uh, reprehensible homosexual conduct and everything and, uh, and against Lawrence v. Texas. So a gay student mm-hmm. stands up in the auditorium and says, uh, Justice Scalia, do you sodomize your wife? <laughs> <laughs> and the whole place goes, <laughs> total freak out. And his, the student, a great guy. We had him uh, on the show. Uh, hmm? We had him on the show. Yes, talking about this, didn't we? Yes. Uh, we should have dug up that tape. Um, he talks about how, look, uh, Scalia's in favor of invading mine and everyone else's privacy on these issues and condemning us for our private consensual acts. So I thought it was perfectly appropriate to stand up and ask him about his private yeah. uh, sexual conduct. And, you know, this guy almost got kicked out of law school, yep. uh, but it, uh, what a hero well, to, it, to call him on in this one stuff. Of his, in one of his answers to those kinds of questions, Scalia said, oh, well, you know, what about pedophiles? Nobody loves them. You know, <laughs> don't they need protection? Well, and everybody needs protection. You know. I am going to now pause after all this and say, folks, yes, we're all focused on the presidential election and everything else. The U.S. Senate elections will be the key to our future now. Uh, if, if, if we can't get, and I'm just going to say it, it's not a partisan thing, but if there's not a Democratic majority to confirm these judges, uh, all bets are off and we're going to get a, 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 you know, a very bad judiciary. Well, so, so there are swing, you bone up on who's running in your area. In the, in, the, in the districts and, and in your states and all those things. I am, and sor- the states. I am sorry to say that I got a call from a friend after Scalia's death was announced uh, wanting my take on all this. And I said to her, well, among other things, the uh, Senate elections become really doubly important now. It's very important yeah. to uh, pay attention to electing uh, the right senators. And she said to me, and when are those elections? <laughs> <God>. <laughs> I said, November? Here, uh, she said, oh, you mean like uh, around the same time as the uh, presidential election? <laughs> I said, yeah, exactly the same time as the presidential. People, for, you must. Pay attention. Now, I, I, I have to say that anyone who's watching this show is presumably more hip to the political process than that. But uh, it, it is just shameful. I think I've now used that word three right. times it's tonight. Right. It's all right. Shameful, number four. We're not going to accuse you of being Marco Rubio. That, <laughs> that people don't pay attention to this. Yes. How do they not pay attention? Here's how it works. One third of the Senate is up for election every two years. They keep so that they space they it out. They stagger it. They space it out a little bit. There may be one in your state. Actually, I will say, I was sort of surprised to say, oh my God, Chuck Schumer's up for election this year. <laughs> uh, next, you know, he is. Well, uh, but our the, va- senator, the one vast. Of our senators. The Nobody's va- running against him. The vast majority of the third of the Senate who are up this year, as it happens, are Republicans. Yeah. Uh, two years ago, it was mostly Democrats. This the, year, it's Republicans, and a lot of them are vulnerable. Harry Reid is uh, retiring in uh, Nevada. And uh, <laughs> he's so, been practicing saying Nevada. Say Nevada. <laughs> so 
uh, that's an open seat, and he's not going to be, so he can't be a majority leader. They're looking at Chuck Schumer as the majority leader. Now, Chuck Schumer is the one who engineered the thing where we now have uh, no more filibusters of federal judgeships except for the Supreme Court. Right. And he needs to come in on January 6th, which is when they take office, and change that rule. I'm in favor. I think judges should get up or down votes, period. I don't believe in filibustering. I don't like filibustering anyway. Uh, but uh, obviously, uh, look, both if it, sides. If it allows us to hear Ted Cruz read <laughs> Dr. Seuss stories, what could you have against him? All right. More news. We need to... uh, people, I, I'm against these uh, phony filibusters that are just, uh, we declare a filibuster right. instead of requiring people to actually take the floor and filibuster. Well, that just requires 60 votes as yeah. opposed to the uh, uh, 60, two thirds. two thirds to stop debate. Okay. But it's crazy. It's bad. Please, please pay attention. We live in a sort of democracy. Please get active. Please, please, the Senate, the presidency, these, uh, the House. Come on, let's be ambitious. So, you know, we've had, I believe, since we last met, two presidential debates, haven't we? Well, uh, I made a couple of presidential notes. One is about Marco Rubio, who announced uh, his marriage and family advisory board yep. because the family instills values. And by family, he means heterosexual married couples. But if he believes in this, why would he appoint the scum of the earth to be on the commission? Well, that too, but I was... Uh, I mean, these people are far, far right people who advocate for things like conversion therapy and sodomy laws and all these kinds of things. And only two of the 13 members are women. <laughs> well... <laughs> You're being mean to mothers. That's, uh, I don't think it's going to make much difference to women who would vote for him. Look, I just was struck by the fact that he is asserting that the need is for families to instill values in their children, but he has a very definition, a very narrow definition of what constitutes yeah. a family. So now, in the, in the Democratic side, Hillary uh, has say, been saying Bernie is a one-note person. He just wants to essentially blow up Wall Street. So she's developed this whole thing, a sort of a litany of human rights things, women. Mm -hmm. LGBT, people of color, and that's the way she's ending and beginning her uh, presentations. South Carolina, uh, Nevada. Uh, of course, one of the ways Bernie got to where he got Hillary is because he has emphasized the one issue that's obviously uh, resonated with people. But I have to say, I love the way Bernie Sanders went after Henry Kissinger, who <laughs> Hillary admits she <laughs> consults with on things like China, and he says he was a war criminal, and I'm glad he's not my friend. And he was doing a whole education on America's bad involvements, which you don't usually hear about in a presidential debate. There was a wonderful documentary years ago uh, that was, I think it was called The Trials of Henry Kissinger. Yes, it is. Uh, three case studies, three, one of them was Chile, one was somewhere in Southeast Asia, maybe Indonesia. We assassinated the leader of Chile, Allende, yes. under Henry Kissinger. Yes, at his order. Uh, but it's three case studies of uh, horrible war crimes he was involved in around human rights uh, crimes that he was involved in around the world and it's very enlightening I highly recommend it I'll bet you would find it on your Netflix uh, and, subscription. And it, and it was you know I hate Donald Trump but and, uh, is that a partisan thing to say but uh, I love the way he attacks George Bush on uh, the Iraq war and and he gets booed for it I love uh, only by Bush supporters. Well, I'm just you yes, know. as he points out, and I love that he keeps calling Ted Cruz a liar. Now there was an internet poll by Community Marketing of LGBT voters. Uh, that's it found very skewed. 48 percent Clinton, 41 percent Sanders. Though Sanders is viewed as the candidate more supportive of equality. I, I, I and, and then there's that's, John. That's a reach. And then there's John Kasich. Yes. He was confronted by a gay guy again, and he said that... Uh, in Michigan. And the student. gay guy says, going to a gay wedding is not enough. And Kasich says, well, we're not going to change any laws. We're not going to allow discrimination on this. And the court has spoken on marriage, and that's the end of it. But he also said that legislation on discrimination or executive orders is fine with him, uh, but he's for traditional marriage. But they didn't pin him down on the Equality Act without amendments, which is what we're pushing for. Look, I, I, if you run into a presidential candidate, and that's less likely these days <laughs> because many have dropped out, but should you run into one, please, especially the Republicans, because the Democrats have already endorsed the Equality Act, yes. but ask those Republicans whether they would endorse the Equality Act. I predict what they'll say to you is the following. 
I don't believe anyone should be discriminated against, especially those oppressed Christians who are being forced to do things that are against their religious beliefs. And then you should ask them again, what about the Equality Act? Though the, uh, um, uh, the Republican candidates for president do think that President Obama is finished, he's still making appointments. Uh, he, uh, he has appointed a transgender man, Jan Williams. Do we have a picture there of Jan? Yeah, uh, maybe. It's a little out of order. A here. young slip of a thing. Yes, uh, maybe not. We'll uh, it doesn't matter. Him. Appointed White House liaison to the uh, Department of Health and Human Services to recruit and support appointees for HHS uh, with the White House Office of Personnel. The first out trans person to serve as White House liaison for any agency. There he is. Yeah, uh, he uh, is from Joshua, Texas was at the Victory Fund training hundreds of LGBT leaders as director of programs. And then uh, I read this story this week, we also have a picture of him, of Brian Mosteller, 40, profiled in the Washington Post. He is the out gay director of the White House Office of Operations. And what the story says, he's absolutely indispensable to Obama, getting him through the day. No one gets in the office w without getting past him. And there was this wonderful quote that he says, when I was young, uh, Brian says, I couldn't fathom that I could ever have a partner. And now, I was with the President of the United States. <laughs> That's very sweet. Hey, yeah, let's not get into Lewinsky territory. Uh, also a nice appointment in Puerto Rico. The governor there has nominated uh, out lesbian uh, associate justice of the Supreme Court, Maite Oronos Rodriguez, as chief justice yeah. of the Supreme Court of Puerto Rico. Wow. This is the first chief justice who's out. It's in fantastic, yes. Congratulations to her. She seems to be a popular favorite there. Uh, we'll follow that to make sure she's confirmed, but she has been nominated by the governor. In Texas, uh, Mary Lou Bruner is running for State Board of Education, and that she said, uh, she posted that Obama has a soft, pot, soft spot for homosexuals because he worked as a male prostitute for years <laughs> in, uh, 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 in his 20s. Now, uh, with those years, she worked, well, some people are into it. She, she worked for 36 years in the East Texas schools. This is her attitude, and she's prepared, she is one of the leading candidates to sit on the 15-member State Board of Education. Someone well, who says the stuff State like Board this. of Education in Texas is notorious for many, many, many years for controlling how textbooks are written in this country because they have such a large population. Oh. And all they do is put right wing stuff in those textbooks. It's unbelievable. In West Texas, there is a former uh, uh, Air Force Colonel, Michael Bob Starr, yep. straight guy, led a bomber wing at Dias Air Force Base. Uh, and he is running for Congress as a Republican candidate. But he is being attacked by the far right wing because he's been friendly to gay people in the military. He, he is a conservative, he's against same-sex marriage, but he's very, he really liked Don't Ask, Don't Tell repeal. He thinks it strengthened the military. He uh, says his attackers are cowards and they're attacking him for taking part in uh, uh, LGBT pride fun runs on the base. Who says we don't say nice things about Republicans? Uh, I'm, I like this guy's attitude. I don't know who's opposing him or who else is in the race, but uh, he's given a good chance, and I appreciate his standing up for gay people. Well, Brian Cody Bray didn't have much of a chance in Little Rock, Arkansas. He's a teacher. Uh, 29 years public old. Public school teacher. Somebody uh, you, uh, leaked a sex tape to his school. They hacked his computer. He, it was a tape of him having sex, so he got fired. And, With uh, a man. Uh, yeah. and uh, It was posted to the school website. The stealer of the tape uh, put, put a name on it, Fag Teacher Bray, which ought to tell you something. Uh, he now believes he's entitled to severance pay. He said, I'm not at fault, and this was a malicious hacker. And he's also filed a police complaint about that. But he's not going to get his job back. Sad story out of Phoenix where uh, a lesbian couple, 15-year-olds at a local high school, uh, were found dead at the school in yes. what is believed to be a murder-suicide. The sister of one of them uh, gave an interview to the local press that talked about her sister as just the most wonderful, loving, high-achieving uh, uh, student. 
and there's no explanation for why this happened. Um, they seem to be very much in love. And yes, and all happy that stuff. And, and successful, and well, it's just a terrible story. Well, uh, Mormon elder uh, Dallin Oaks says, don't blame me. He said, uh, people are wrongly blaming the Mormon church for the rash of suicide since November when they intensified their anti-gay teaching. He says responsibility can only be answered on Judgment Day. Ah. He said church policy should be delivered with kindness. I would urge Mormons to kindly leave the church and uh, as tens of thousands have. That's what I'm saying. Does he want us to wipe out the judicial system and let only God decide? <laughs> well. Uh, I think we need to take a minute to uh, mourn our friend and colleague, oh, Mike yes. Wyand, uh, Absolutely. who has just died. He worked with um, the Gay Cable Network before I was involved with this show. He, he as a college student, he used to come to, he was involved with the Gay Activist Alliance and the Firehouse and, and the Gay Liberation Front. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he's a very, very, we have a pic, the picture of him uh, there? We have the what contemporary like picture of him. Yeah. He called himself Flat Iron Mike yeah. uh, Wyand. There he is. That's he, what he looked like recently. He would show up at every Queer Nation demonstration in the last couple of years. He was a very long time, as you say, Gay Activist Alliance, Gay Liberation Front, everything else uh, activist. Totally dedicated and still a, a, a you know strong supporter of ours and, a, a, and, you know, commentator on our show. We got emails from him every other week about and something. And he would post the show on Facebook, on his Facebook page every yeah. week and really help in distributing it far and wide. You can do that too. He was such a sweet guy and when we were working with him a long uh, time ago uh, we had we had sort of an outlet on the Gay Cable Network in Cincinnati and they interviewed well, him. Well Lou Maletta would bicycle the tapes around the country <laughs> yes. at a half a dozen outlets like yes. San Diego, Denver. Uh, I was very big in Atlanta. <laughs> Well, uh, this we have a little clip of Mike in Cincinnati. Yes, and and er, making an appeal, sort of, for uh, in, not just involving yourself in our in the show, but involving yourself in the movement. So let's let's hear from Flatiron Mike, Mike Wyan. Yeah. Young Mike. And yeah. I'm with the Gay Cable Network. I'm from the New York headquarters, and I'm here in Cincinnati today, visiting with the Gay Cable Network people in Cincinnati. And a lot of times when I talk with people in New York or here in Cincinnati, they want to know, well, why do you do the Gay Cable Network? Why are you involved? And, well, there's several reasons why I'm involved with Gay Cable Network, and we'd hope that you'll be involved with it, whether as a viewer or maybe coming and working with us. There's several reasons. These include the reason that when I get involved with the Gay Cable Network, I'm helping to publicize and create our own images, our own sense of destiny because when you watch it on television, it's real. It's a lot more real than if you read it in a newspaper, and it's certainly a lot more real than if you hear it about it. I'm working with the Gay Cable Network because when I'm working with Gay Cable Network, I'm helping to educate both ourselves as well as educating the straight community as to who we are and what we want, and realizing the fact that we have many different voices because we are not one solid voice, but a sense of communities and we need to be able to speak to each other. I work with the Gay Cable Network because it's an opportunity for talent. Even though it's a lot of hard work sometimes, and sometimes I think, why am I doing this? It's a lot of fun. I've met an awful lot of people through the Gay Cable Network that I only used to read about. So if you're involved with Gay Cable Network, you get to meet and see a lot of people that you may never have ever have met otherwise. Finally, working with the Gay Cable Network it gives me a sense and opportunity to be proud of being gay, proud of being able to help to define our sense of future and document our joys, our sorrows, our pride, and our progress. So, watch Gay Cable Network every week. Join us, work with us, support advertisers if you're in a city where we advertise, and keep the word up, keep the spirit up, and remember, be proud, be gay. Thank you. Back in back in 1985, and we were we were a commercial show back back uh, in the yeah, old no days. More yes, we don't we don't take any advertising. <laughs> no, no, no. We're a nonprofit. But we love Mike, and we really appreciated his involvement and his support and his activism. And he will be missed by a very large group very of so. friends sad, and activists. Very sad to see him go. And in uh, in his memory, let's celebrate uh, the life of Dr. Nirgis Mavalavala. 
She didn't die. No, <laughs> she was a key part of the uh, team that uh, confirmed the Einstein gravitational wave theory. Yes, I can't. I can't. Uh... Uh, explain it to you. Well, uh, and <laughs> we'll let's tell Donald Trump that she was originally from Pakistan, came here as a teenager, uh, is 47 years old, won a MacArthur Genius Grant in 2010. Describes herself as an out queer person of color. I don't mind being on the fringes of any social group. You're less constrained by the rules. She's at MIT, and congratulations to her for this enormous triumph and we're happy to have our community be part of it. And I'm happy to see that uh, the 1,200 workers challenging the denial of health insurance to same-sex spouses at Walmart um, uh, are, have been declared a class and they're going forward with that case. These, these are for the people who uh, after they it was who, who weren't recognized before Walmart changed its policy. Uh, and then let's go to West Virginia to Gilmer County where a, lesb you know, a lesbian couple applied for marriage license. It's, it's legal everywhere, right? So the deputy clerk called them an abomination and said that God will judge them. Gave them the license, but, uh, you know, uh, she uh, left them in tears. Told them they were wrong in uh, my eyes and God's eyes and no one here will marry you. Yeah, so uh, uh, <laughs> Americans United for the Separation of Church and State is threatening a suit. And she said, I had, I, she had to do this, and God was standing with her when she did it. She also said, I didn't attack them, I didn't yell at them, I was not aggressive, I feel I talked nicely to them. So they complained to the clerk. Now, she's the deputy clerk, mm -hmm. and, the dep and the clerk says, well, I agree with her. So the fight is not over yet, folks, yeah. but we appreciate everyone who continues to fight on. And I know it's shocking to be confronted with these daily attempts at humiliation, but no, none of these people can humiliate you. Well, it's especially tough now in Indonesia. Are we on to international sure. news? Sure, yeah. Well, there's a big crackdown on gays going on. We've been already told you about some of the stories. There's a, uh, uh, they, there's a... Uh, they're claim the government is claiming there's a rash of cross-dressing by boys, so they have to do something. They're calling for banning gay content on social media, smartphones. Uh, the National Com Commission on Child Protection is pushing uh, for a ban of gay content on the airwaves. Now, homosexuality is not illegal in Indonesia. No. But they're doing all this stuff anyway, and it's a sign that the government is in trouble. They're trying to block UN anti-discrimination rules. They are shutting down LGBT emojis online. And a lot of this, they canceled an HIV outreach effort to uh, gay and bisexual men. And this has led to vigilante attacks sure. on LGBT people in Indonesia. It has suddenly gotten ugly, ugly. Right. for no particular reason. Things were, well, you I, know, uh, Indonesia has never been what you would call particularly gay friendly. Uh, it is a, a large Muslim country, but uh, there has not been this kind it's a of place hysteria. Where a lot of, it's a place, certainly a place where a lot of tourists go for all, from all over the world. Absolutely. And uh, uh, I but, think we'll be less likely to now uh, uh, it is uh, it's it's hysteria uh, there's a little hysteria in the Czech Republic too where authorities are investigating 30 HIV positive men and claiming they had unprotected sex uh, because they have some sexually transmitted uh, infections like gonorrhea and they say well <laughs> You know, uh, condoms are not a full protection against uh, uh, sexually transmitted infections. Uh, also, they have no complainants on this and no evidence of any uh, HIV transmission, but these guys are being hunted down uh, like dogs for, well, for no good reason. Well, better news from Nepal, uh, where, you know, the Supreme Court there in 2007 said, you've got to protect gay rights and do same-sex marriage and all those things, and they never did it. So now the National Human Rights Commission says, you need to do it. <laughs> That's the story. Well, I do hope they get to that. In, uh, uh, wait, there's a similar story, or maybe I'm just thinking of that. Well, in Italy, they're uh, debating civil unions, but uh, it's not going well. And the vote was suspended on Tuesday after a three-hour raucous debate. Uh, Prime <laughs> Minister Renzi has rejected the Catholic Church's interference on this and he's because the bishops demanded a secret vote in the Senate and he said no he said what is there to fear from two people who love each other and he says the country is behind him 
but the church is interfering. And, you know, Pope Francis met with uh, the head of the Russian Orthodox Church. They were in, in Havana. For some reason. And they both issued a statement against same-sex marriage. And this, this guy from the Russian Orthodox is a virulently anti-gay guy. You don't need to be making friends with him. You need to be making friends with us. Well, uh, the Pope was touring South America before this, and the whole thing there now is Catholic bishops saying, uh, no contraception, no abortion. We don't care if this Zika virus is out there and you're having uh, children who are damaged uh, by this virus. Uh, you, uh, the church remains firm, no contraception, no but abortion. it turns out that Pope John Paul II did violate his vow of celibacy. Now, let me explain. I mean, the, the papers. <laughs> Please do. Well, the papers were full of a big story about he had this lifelong love affair as a priest and a bishop and as pope with a Polish American academic uh, who he was totally in love with. They went on trips together. They went, you know, swimming. She was they at went, his deathbed. They went skiing. She was at his deathbed. You know, uh, now they're very careful to say, oh, he wouldn't have violated his vows. But the vow of celibacy means you're not supposed to live in the married state. You're not supposed to have relationships like this. You're allowed to have uh, well, relatively close friendships. Now, serious, I talked to Father Bernard Lynch, a gay Catholic <laughs> priest who was himself yeah, married. But and she, he said this, she remained married to a, another man. The, but the, the point of celibacy is that you're not supposed to be devoted to another person. Well, we you're, haven't seen we haven't seen all the letters. We've seen his letters, but not her letters. I've seen some of the pictures. She could certainly have been totally infatuated with him. We I am not saying that they had genital sexuality. I understand. I understand. Yeah. But they, uh, you know, it could have been a, just a good friendship. Uh, and uh, uh, the, here I am defending a pope. Well, and the Vatican issued a statement this week that said that priests don't have to report abuse of, of children. Uh, let the families take care of it. Uh, it was Bermuda I was to, uh, reaching for a moment ago. The government is agreeing with the right wing uh, to try to block same-sex marriage by letting the uh, anti-same-sex yeah. marriage law preempt the human rights law. But they are going to propose civil unions. But the real thing is that the court there, uh, the chief justice issued a ruling for equal rights for same-sex couples. And that takes effect at the end of this month, no well, matter what happens. I heard that the parliament there, though, was going to carve out uh, an exception to the human rights law so that they could keep the ban. There, yes, uh, to try to override the chief justice's ruling. But uh, but they're still going to go for civil unions, I think, uh, while they try to put up a wall <laughs> against marriage. In Mexico and the Durango state, they postponed the marriage equality bill. So gays and lesbians just occupied the floor of the Congress. I want to see more of that <laughs> yes. out there. Uh, in the Philippines, a local city council in the town of Mandawi, Mandui, something like that, has approved a sexual orientation, uh, gender identity, non-discrimination law. But uh, famous Philippine boxer Manny Pacquiao yeah. is in trouble. He's gone from boxing to politics and he, he sounds like Justice Scalia well he said calling us animals he said you don't see animals having uh, same-sex relations <laughs> yes, well you yes you do, do Manny <laughs> there are books written about that but that makes us worse than animals because uh, <laughs> he's in trouble I hope he's in let's, big trouble let's, let's run our little tape from Peru if we can uh, where water cannons were used uh, versus the Peruvian LGBT activists there yeah they so, have an annual kiss in in Lima run, it's very peaceful in the center of town but the cops came out with water cannons and all hell broke loose don't you don't you know that they're not supposed to be any demonstrations in the square uh, show us that tape I think we can uh... <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Australia, 40 religious leaders called for a parliamentary vote on same-sex marriage, not the planned plebiscite. But the right wing wants the anti-discrimination law suspended during the uh, marriage campaign because they don't want to be accused of and prosecuted for hate speech. You just watch yourselves. <laughs> Oh, we're not against anyone. We're we're in you know we're, uh, we're we don't favor discrimination. And Stephen Fry says that when Queen Elizabeth signed the uh, same-sex marriage bill, there she said, "Who'd have thought I'd been doing this when I got to the throne 62 years ago? <laughs> Isn't it wonderful?" Of course, we don't know this. Somebody reported this. She's never spoken about gay stuff publicly. I would call but it he, highly unlikely. He has it on good authority. <laughs> A lot of gays around her, I guess. Uh, Madonna on Valentine's Day was promoting peace in the Middle East by posting a picture of an Israeli and Arab boy. That's a great thing. They did, of course, they did something like that on the cover of the New Yorker about 1993 yeah. with a Hasid uh, and, a, yeah. and a black woman. Uh, and in Sweden, you'll all be happy to know, uh, production begins this spring on a movie of Tom of Finland. Oh, yes. Uh, a biopic uh, authorized by the Tom of Finland Foundation. I don't know why they're making it in Sweden rather than Finland, but what the heck. Okay. AIDS, AIDS news. news. Well, uh, the... Oh, I have one other note here that I missed. Uh, the state of Georgia Department of Corrections has agreed to pay a settlement of more than a quarter of a million dollars to Ashley Diamond, the trans woman who was uh, mistreated in oh, yeah. prison. So she's getting uh, $250,000. Congratulations, Ashley. President Obama's budget seems to remove all funding for abstinence-only education. Seems to, but House Speaker Paul Ryan says he's not even going to consider the budget. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, oh, Charlie Sheen was back on Dr. Oz. <laughs> yes. Well, it's good news this time. It's something that we talked about a few weeks ago that we thought, uh, while not proved yet by any means, uh, showed promise, which is this idea of a uh, weekly or monthly injection instead of taking pills daily when you're HIV infected to control the virus and make you non-detectable or whatever. Uh, the idea would be that you uh, you are injected and they've done some yes. small trials that they've found to be effective and Charlie is now hooking up with this uh, this company and these trials and is going to be part of the uh, trial. I've asked the people uh, promoting this uh, to give me some information on whether others can get into these trials. I await that information. I will pass it along well, if I get I it. Well, I want to urge you to read up uh, Google. Just Google HPV, HPV infection and oral sex. There's another new study out about it. They're, they're Anal sex, too. Great risk, uh, yes, great, but great risk of uh, uh, or, uh, oral cancers mm -hmm. from uh, HPV. Absolutely. And Michael a lot Douglas. Of, a lot of it is from oral sex, and it's complicated. It's very, very complicated. It seems to affect uh, men more than women. Uh, well, Michael Douglas says he, uh, he got throat cancer from oral sex presumably on a woman. Never know. You never know, but that was his Boy story. So I urge you to read up on it because there's a lot of stuff out there about it. And also a, if you a real like danger in anal and, sex, too. Real yes. danger in, for anal cancer. Well, and, you know, and vaginal sex. I yeah, mean, too. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Governor Cuomo in New York has proposed adding HIV to the list of sexually transmitted diseases that uh, can be... Uh, treated uh, with privacy and confidentiality for minors. Uh, uh, minors are often subject to notification of parents, but there is an STI anonymity list in New York. And finally, finally, in 2016, the governor is proposing adding HIV to that list. In California, as of April, you're going to be able to get birth control pills without a prescription, as you can in Washington State and Oregon. Of course, then will they be reimbursable? That's uh, another that's question. That's a problem. Uh, but there also have new rules in California mandating condoms during oral sex in adult films. And uh, the Free Speech Coalition there, which is opposing this, said it would also require goggles and dental dams. And, and it'll move the industry out of the state. GMHC in New York City, gay men's health crisis is expanding. It's free and confidential testing for HIV and sexually transmitted uh, infections to Saturdays, uh, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, on their West 33rd Street building. Uh, go to gmhc.org for more information about that testing. Entertainment news. Yeah, they also do referrals for care and for 
Crep and Pep. A viewer wrote to ask if we liked London Spy on BBC America with Ben Wish, the spy drama with Ben Wishaw and Jim Broadbent. I think it's terrific, but it's over at this point by the time Maybe you watch this. Maybe it's available on demand. It's yeah. six episodes. London Spy, the, uh, gay, a lot of... It's, it's totally of, gay. A lot of gay, it's all gay. gay stuff, gay nuances, nuances to the relationships, fascinating. Yeah, I've Unexpected enjoyed it. Stuff. I have yep. enjoyed it. Okay. Uh, uh, and some may be enjoying uh, the British version of The Voice, which now has a trans woman contestant, Jordan Gray, <laughs> who's uh, moving up in the competition, singing Just Like a Woman, the Bob Dylan song. I want to recommend Buried Child, a revival of Sam Shepard's play there at the Signature Theater off-Broadway. It's been extended already to April 3rd. It's with the great Ed Harris and Amy Madigan. Uh, it's very, very disturbing, but it's often very funny. It's, a, it's an hour and 45 minutes with no interval, and uh, I, uh, I liked it. Uh, I watched the Grammys. I know you didn't. Uh, I thought there were two magnificent performances, Bonnie Raitt and company doing The Thrill Has Gone, the great old B.B. King song as a tribute to him. Fantastic. Uh, and the other big one I liked was Girl Crush by Little Big Town, which is the country song that won country song of the year, was nominated for song of the year. It's a sort of provocative lesbian but not lesbian song. It's a woman singing I've Got a Girl Crush, and it's been very famous this year. It's actually her singing to her man about his relationship with a new woman. Yeah, we talked about it when it came out, yes. didn't we? Yes. Uh, so one country song of the year. I've decided to reinterpret it as an all-lesbian song. Uh, I have decided she's not singing to a man. She's singing to a woman. <laughs> and you ought to know. I'm going to make it a lesbian triangle. But they did it with strings in this lush arrangement to this huge, you know, on the Grammys in this stadium uh, of uh, watchers. And the next day, people on the talk shows were all talking about how great it was and how they all have girl crushes. And, I, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not really us, but uh, you can call it us and you can make it a... You, it's good that uh, we're getting talked about in a sort of provocative way. Soon I there will that. come a time when we I had care mixed about feelings about the uh, Bowie, the Lady Gaga uh, Bowie tribute. I thought it was... Uh, she tried to pack a little too much in. I wish she'd just done one or two songs. And I watched the BAFTA Awards, the British uh, Oscars, essentially. And uh, not much gay stuff there, except it's hosted by Stephen Fry, and he's constantly drooling over attractive men. I know, it's a little I found annoying. That a bit much. It is. Uh, I like him, but uh, it's you know I know he's trying to break barriers of some sort, but sexual harassment is not a good idea. More opinions next week. Okay. We'll see you then. Thank you for watching. Write to Andy or go to our website at gayusatv.org. Yeah,